reckon they're cured. I wish they all was as easy to drive out as them two. You know, that's the fourth time Mason has sold that same place. <laughs> <laughs> Doggone you. A man can't snatch 40 winks without you busting in. If you do your sleeping at night, it would help a lot. I do, but night ain't long enough. So you spend your day dreaming. Yeah, I like to dream. You meet some mighty nice people that way. What did you find out in town? Uh, nothing much yet. Mr. Cartwright, the man I want to see, is still away. He's in trouble. Plenty of trouble, son. We just got robbed and chased out of Julesburg. What do you mean, chased out? Well, we bought little rants from the Land and Water Company. Our first payment took all our savings. And things wasn't just as they was represented to be. And after we'd built our cabin, we found it impossible to farm the land. Yeah, the creek bed seemed to dry up quite sudden-like. And when we couldn't make our next payment, some men came and drove us off. Didn't you try to get your money back? Yes, but there was a joker in their bill of sales, so what could we do? So Dad and I decided to take our loss and head back to Kentucky. Well, I can't say as I blame you. But things are going to be different in Julesburg when Mr. Cartwright gets back. Why not stick around a while and camp out? No, son, you got a fight in your hands. And we're kind of getting along in years for fighting. Me and Matilda. Yes, I reckon we're too old for a young country like this. Thanks, son. Bye. 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 What happened, Jack? Somebody gave those people a pretty raw deal in Julesburg. What do you mean? Come on, I'll tell you about it. It's a condition that has to be faced. This is pioneer country. We want pioneer people. That right, Slade? Sure, this is fight and scratch in country. We gotta grab what we can and hold on to it. Well, that being settled, I think it's about time for a little nip. What do you say, Jess? Suits me, I can stand it. Me too. I want to talk to you. Not now, Bart. I'm busy. Yeah, you're busy, all right. Busy cheating honest people out of their money. Now, I told you I'd take care of everything. In the meantime, I'm going broke. What's the trouble, Reynolds? I bought a piece of land for a ranch site. Mason said there was water. Didn't you look at it? Sure, there was water. Quick run through one corner. Well, what's the kick? Course was changed to the ranch next to mine. That's right. We can't guarantee how a quick will run. A cloudburst can cut a new bed overnight. There ain't been a cloudburst in six months, and you know it. I want my money, and I want it right now. There's still enough honest people in this town ain't gonna knuckle down to being robbed. Ah, uh, give him his money. Stop him from crying. Why, of course, Bart. I didn't realize you felt this way. Step in the office and sign a release. When you get your money, pin it inside your shirt and hightail it out of here, back the way you came from. This ain't no country for crybabies.
Land and Water Company has no intention of cheating anyone, Reynolds. Here's your money. Thanks, Mason. Guess maybe I flew off the handle outside. Just sign this release and everything will be legal and above board. You no, know, this money represents all I've got in the world. Forget it, Buck. Here we are. The duck. That's right to see you go. but I ain't taking any chances. I was calling meat. Getting him won't do no good, but he's dumb enough to lead you to his partner. You know, that stranger that's been hanging around town asking questions. Well, what then? Then you can really unlimber that itchy trigger finger. Now get going and be sure you don't miss. I don't want him messing up that stagecoach job. Don't worry about me, but where are you going? I'm going to post the other boys on the stage road and then hightail it back to town. You sure scared me. You scared me too, plenty. Busting in here like that. But I got news. I just learned that Cartwright's coming in on the afternoon stage. Good. We'll meet that stage at Beaver Gulch and talk to him before he gets to town. Hear anything more about Slade? No, but the ranchers all seem to think he's behind all this trouble around here. I hear two of them talking, but they didn't say much. Yeah, they don't trust anybody. Are you sure you weren't followed? Me followed? Man, there ain't nothing ever followed me but uh, women. <laughs> Much to my sorrow, I haven't seen one in two months. So nothing ever follows you, huh? Seems to be a lot of lead following me at present. I wonder how many of them there are. That guy's quite a shot. After this, use your own hat. Hey, where are you going? Well, there's no use in waiting here to be picked off. We'll make a run for those trees. You cover me. Well, why not wait until night and then we can sneak out? You forget Cartwright on the afternoon stage. I'll well, get ready.
Come out of there with your hands up. Now, who are you and who are you working for? Come on, let's have it. Well, you were snooping around and we don't like strangers. Who doesn't like strangers? I don't know. I ain't been around long enough to find out. I heard they could use some guns, so I tied in with them. You heard who could use a few guns. Come on, speak up. Was it Slade? Yeah, Slade. That's what I thought. Now, what's your name? Red McGuire. Watch it to you. Red, I don't want to hear that name around this part of the country again. Now get mounted. You better sit down. All right. Oh, you folks all right? Oh, yes, sir. I'm sorry, You've I did... you enough damage. Hold up your hands. Well, you don't understand. Mr. Cartwright will vouch for me. My name is Jack Ridgely. My father used to work for you. I've been hanging around for a week waiting to see you. Why, of course, my boy. How are you? I've been away on business. Oh, this is Miss Helen Martin and her brother Don. How do you do? Hello, Don. How do you do? Then you're not a bandit? No. We just chased bandits for amusement. Well, this is my friend Fuzzy Glass. Uh, just call me Fuzzy. Let's get the stage going, shall we, Fuzzy? I'm sorry about the gun. Oh, Miss Martin and her brother are buying a little ranch near Julesburg. And I have our money here, and naturally I tried to protect it. Well, naturally. But next time be sure your um, gun is loaded. I was in my second year at West Point when war was declared. Your father served with the Texas troops, didn't he? Yes. As soon as the war was over, I traced him as far as Julesburg, but I was too late. He was manager of your stage line, wasn't he, Mr. Cartwright? Yes. After his death, I put Slade in his place, thinking maybe a gunfighter like him might be able to handle the situation. Was Slade around town when my father was killed? No. Appears to me he turned up the next day. As a matter of fact, I believe Slade's the man found the body. Mr. Cartwright, what really happened to my father? Well, nobody rightly knows, sir. 
He was found out on the mesa one day with a bullet in his head. Whoa there, boy. What's the matter? There's a horse. That's funny, he's saddled. Trouble? I hope not. You better stay here. This man was shot only a few minutes ago. Wonder we didn't hear the shot. We wouldn't with the noise the stagecoach was making. The fellow was close enough for this man to grab at him. Whoever did it must have heard us coming. Money bill's empty. Well, it's Bart Reynolds. That's the sort of thing I was telling you about. It's an outrage. Yes, sir, it is that. I'm looking forward to meeting this man Slade. What time you got here? You're two hours late. What happened? Plenty. What is this, a picnic? Who are you? Uh, Fuzzy Glass. Just call me Fuzzy for short. Howdy, Mr. Cartwright. I'm sorry you're delayed. Delayed? I had more things happen to me on this trip than I thought possible. We found Bart Reynolds out on the trail murdered. Reynolds? He just left town this afternoon. He didn't get very far, did he? No. Hey, you. Get Doc and go out on the trail and pick the body up. Doc can't find out anything we don't know. The man's dead. And it's a wonder we're all not. Why, if it hadn't been for this young man, we would have been. Yeah? I've seen him around town. You're the strangers asking all the questions, ain't you? Yeah. I hear you don't like strangers. That's right. Till I know who they are, what they want. Who told you? Red. Red? Yeah, you know. You're crazy. Maybe. Maybe I'm crazy not to be scared of that reputation of yours. What do you mean by that? Maybe I think you know a whole lot more about these killings and holdups than you let on. You are crazy. Here, here. This is no cause for you two to get your tail feathers ruffled. Slade, this is Jack Ridgely. Ridgely? Any kin to Jim Ridgely? Some, but don't let that stop you. Head warm. When you're through, Mr. Cartwright, I'd like to see you. Well, you seem to pick up a fire eater, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> yes, I have. Mason, meet Jack Ridgely. Mr. Mason from the Land and Water Company. How are you, Mr. Mason? Pleased to meet you, Ridgely. I knew your father. This is the first time I ever heard of that anybody stood up to Slade and kept standing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, this is Miss uh, Martin and her brother Don. I believe they wrote you about some land. Oh, oh yes. How do you How are you, Miss Martin? Uh, I'm sure you must be anxious to get settled. Uh, we'll go right over to the office and draw up the papers. Thank you very much, Mr. Ridgely, for all you've done. Don't mention it. Oh, yes. Uh, shake hands with Yucca Wood, Ridgely. He'll show you around the town. Hello. Howdy. If you'll come this way, please. So that's Jack Ridgely, huh? Don't look much like his old man. No, he doesn't. That's funny. What? My watch charm's gone. Oh, you'll find it somewhere. You know, I hope we're not disturbing Fuzzy's nap. Don't worry about him. and scrub till you wouldn't know the old place. You've never seen such dust. Looks well on you, too. What? The dust. You ought to see your face. Oh. <laughs> Does it begin to look like home around here? Yes, thanks to your help in getting it settled. It's been a pleasure, and besides, I need the practice. You ought to have a place of your own. I'll speak to Mr. Mason. Maybe he could interest you in this part of the country. Well, there's lots to be said for uh, this part of the country.
Morning, ma'am. Morning, Mr. Haddon. You must be Ridgely. My name's Haddon, Ross Haddon. I own the next ranch. How are you, Mr. Haddon? Howdy. I come over to have a little talk with you, Ridgely. Do you mind, ma'am? Of course not. Go right ahead. Come on down. Let's go see about dinner. Sure, sir. Shall we sit down? I don't mind. Oh, this is fuzzy glass. You can just drop the glass and call me fuzzy. <laughs> Let's go over here. Well, Ridgely, in spite of what you hear, there's a decent law-abiding element around here that don't like the way things are going. Why don't they do something about it? Well, you know how it is. Each man has so many troubles of his own, he can't take time to help his neighbor. And this single-handed fighting won't get you no place. Go ahead, you got more than that on your mind. Well, this killing of Bart Reynolds has got the boys riled up. Now, we're convinced that Slade had a hand in it, but we can't pin him down. Some of the boys were in town the other day, and so you meet Slade. Then when they learned that you'd been an officer in the Union Cavalry, well, they decided you was the man. How many men feel the way you do? Oh, ten. More will come when they see we mean business. A few good men working together can do a lot of good. Most of them are ex-soldiers and used to taking orders. Of course, they wasn't all on the same side. <laughs> well, that should take care of itself. You better send out word to have these men get together. I have. They'll be at Indian Rock at 4 o'clock. Boys, here we are, like we agreed. Here's Captain Jack Ridgely. Patton here tells me you're raring to go. You're doing all right, boys. Let's go. Raring to go. Well, I've seen a lot of options start out like this, but they get out of hand when some men start using them to settle their personal grudges. I don't think any of you have a bigger score to settle than I have. That's right, Cap. Most of us knew your dad. Sure did. Sure did. Sure did. Yeah. Sure. And I take this job on one condition, that we handle the men responsible according to law. There ain't no law in Julesburg. There will be. We'll see to it. I think most of us are with you, Cap. Why, sure. When do we start? Come on, Reb. They reckon you're shacked. Oh, no, they ain't. Hold it, everybody. There you go, scattering all over the country. Well, I'm going to my shack. We're all going to your shack. But we're not stampeding in there like a bunch of locoed cattle. That's right, boys. He's leading us. This is far enough, men. Let's go back and fix up Reb's shack. Come 
bunch of vigilantes jumped us down at Nelson's and scattered the boys from here to breakfast. Risley was leading them. Vigilantes? Yeah, this Ross Haddon and Reb Nelson and most of the ranchers. They mean business. What are we going to do? Lay low. Get word to the boys to disappear till this cools off. I'll figure something. You keep the boys out of sight. Go on, hop to it. That's because you made such a mess of the Bark Brandles killing. It's because you brought young Ridgely in. I didn't bring him. I found him here. You mean I should have warned him to stay out of Julesburg? No, no, I, of course not. I, I don't know what I mean. Uh, this vigilante thing's got me all twisted up. Well, calm down. They'll shoot a few people, hang a few more, and then go back to work. Our business is to see that they shoot and hang the right ones. You got an idea? Yes. Somebody we want to get rid of. at home? Well, no, sir. She went into town with Jack. Did you want to see her? No, just came to visit a while and see how things were going. Well, you've got the place fixed up pretty nicely. Did you hear about the vigilantes? Hear about them? Well, the whole town's buzzing with the news. Were you with them? No, I missed it. Jack made me stay here with Helen. <laughs> you sound disappointed. What, well, did you like to be in on it? Of course. I was wondering if we couldn't, now that Jack and the vigilantes have shown the way. How? If we could find out who killed Bart Reynolds, for instance. Say, what kind of detective are you? Mm, I don't know. We ought to be able to figure out something. We were there when the body was found. Well, let's see, you now. Jack and Fuzzy were there. And then you ran up. Jack said he hadn't been dead very long. Yes, I remember. He examined him, didn't he? Yes. Hey, wait a minute. Jack took something from Reynolds' hand. A watch fob. Hmm, that sounds like business. Are you sure? Oh, yes. Jack figured Reynolds grabbed it from the man that robbed him. I wonder why the robber didn't take it back. Because mm, we came along in the stagecoach and scared him away. Hmm. Slade lost the watch fob the day we drove in. Maybe that's the proof Jack needs to tie Slade up for the killings. Why, <laughs> you are a detective. Is Jack still got the watch fob? Why, oh, sure. He was looking at it this morning when he was waiting for Sis. Come on, let's go see him about Slade. John, what are you doing here? Well, we just figured out who killed Bart Reynolds. Is that right, Mr. Cartwright? I'm afraid it is. Did you find a watch fob in Reynolds' hand? Well, I told Mr. Cartwright about it, Jack. Oh. Why, yes, I did. Probably Slate. Well, Ridgely, looks like this might be a job for your vigilantes. Let's talk to Slade first. Cartwright says you lost a fob like this the day Bart was killed. Go ahead, Mason. This is your party. You and Yucca are the only ones in town had fobs like this. Yucca's wearing his. Is this your fob? No. Can you prove it? Not right now. What's the use of wasting time? We know the man's reputation. It's his fob, all right. You're ahead of these vigilantes, Risley. What are you going to do? No cause for a lot of talk. Come on, man. Now, wait a minute. Let go! All the evidence against this man is purely circumstantial. Well, that's enough for me. And me. He's been a bully and gunfighter ever since he got in town. That's got nothing to do with it. You, Reb, you said there was no law in Julesburg. I said we'd bring it. Here's our chance. We'll hold Slade for trial and let him tell his side. Why don't he tell it now? I can't. Give me 24 hours. Oh, he's sparring for time. We'll find that out in court. We're holding court right now. What's the verdict, men? Guilty? Sure, he's guilty. All right, take him. Now, get back. Hold it, Mason. You seem to be the real rip snorter around here. 
So instead of egging these men on, suppose you try and take him. Now calm down, everybody. Jack's right. The man deserves a trial. I say put him in jail. I'll be responsible for him. That's satisfactory? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's that's sure. Well, if you say so, Mr. Cartwright. Here, Jack. As long as you're responsible for him, you better keep the key. Right. See you later. Mm -hmm. You overplayed your hand and young Ridgely got suspicious. We can handle Slade in jail just as well. No. We'll still let the vigilantes handle him. How? By engineering a little jailbreak. You got another key? Of course. Why did the vigilantes come in? We let them know that Slade is escaping. Oh, that'll finish Slade and Ridgely will get the blame. Exactly. Now see if you can handle it without starting another war. Say, Fuzzy, for a fellow we figured was working with Slade, Mason seems mighty anxious to get rid of him. Now you take Helen back to the ranch. I'm going to stay in town for a while. All right. What's the matter? Slade broke jail. How do you know? The Yucca told us, and Haddon and Reb were rounding up the vigilantes. Well, it's funny that Yucca knew about the break before it happened. We better stop Slade. I thought there was some trick to it when somebody threw that key in my cell with no gun. I thought so too. That's why I followed you. Well, where do you stand? Well, I don't know. I want to talk to you, but I can't do that with you hanging from a tree. I guess it turned out to be your party. Well, it won't be long unless I can head them off. Give me your hat and jumper.
Well, I guess we've lost Slade. That weren't Slade. That was Jack Risley. What? Captain Jack? Are you sure? Why, sure. I chase too many Yankee cavalrymen not to know one when I see him. Well, that leaves us in a bad spot. We'd better go back to my ranch and talk this thing out. No use chasing him any further. That's right. And that fob you took from Bart Reynolds couldn't have been mine because I didn't miss mine until after the killing. Why didn't you say that? What's the use? The cards were stacked against me. Then you figured that Yucca killed Bart and then stole your fob. I'm sure of it. And that clinches what I know about Mason. Well, that's that. Now there's something else. Yeah, I know. Your father. Read that. Well, this is from my dad to you. That's right. Your father and me used to be partners down by Albuquerque. Then he took the job with Cartwright. I got that letter from him telling me there was some funny business going on up here and asking me to come up and help him. He must have found something out. He did. That's why they got him. If I'd only been a day sooner. Cartwright tells me you found my father. That's right, son. I'll take you to his grave. Thanks. I buried him right where I found him, looking up at the mountains he loved. Didn't you take my father to town? No. Then how did Cartwright know that my father was shot in the head? What? When I asked Cartwright what really happened to my dad, he said, I don't rightly know, son. He was found out in the mesa with a bullet in his head. He was shot in the head, all right. But only the man responsible would know it. It stands to reason that somebody smarter than Mason is behind all this. It's still your party. No, it's everybody's party. Think what they've done to these people. Think of Bart Reynolds and what might happen to Helen and Don. Slade, you've got to give yourself up. To Cartwright? No, to the vigilantes. Buzzy! What's on your mind? You go with Slade. Give this letter to Haddon and tell him what we suspect. What about you? I'm going to work on Cartwright. Alone? Yes, it's a long shot, but it might hit. Now, here's what Haddon must do. No funny business now, Slade. What are you up to? Uh, he ain't looking for no trouble. Jack told us to find you. Yeah, read this. You mean you were a partner of Jack's father? That's right. Where's Jack? He's gone to town. He wants you and I to keep the vigilantes together. What's the idea? He's got a plan. And if it works, we'll get the goods and the whole gang at once. We're to wait here till Fuzzy brings his final word. Yeah, I'd better be going, so uh, sit tight till I get back. Hello, Mr. Cartwright. I thought I'd find you here. Hello, Jack. What can I do for you? I'd like to speak to you in private, if you don't mind. Oh, Mason's all right. I'd trust him with my life. Speak up, son. Why, sure, Ridgely. I was a little hasty. Forget it. Well, it's about Slade. I've got him hidden out in your squaw tooth. I still don't believe he's guilty, and I think he deserves a chance to prove it. Well, we can agree on that, but the jailbreak looks bad. Yes, I guess that convinced everybody. I don't see just how I can help. Well, I'd like to bring him in so you could hear his story. You mean here? What about the vigilantes? They're looking over by Beaver Gulch. I can sneak in the north end of town, and I know that when you meet him, everything will be settled. And that's risky for you, isn't it? Yeah, even the vigilantes have turned against me. They think I'm working with Slade. You're the only one I can turn to. If you get this far, we can protect you. It's coming in from Squaw Tooth that bothers me. Well, I've got that all figured out. I'll sneak him down through Indian Pass. Nobody's watching there. All right, son. You get him, and I'll back your play. It's about time somebody took a stand for law and order around here. Thanks. I knew you'd do it. I'll have him here in an hour. He's crazy. He'll never get to town. That's correct. You get Yucca and the rest of the boys and head for Indian Pass. When Ridgely rides through with Slade, well... 
Be sure you've got enough men to handle it. Get your men. Yeah, they're up and heading. Well, get them down to the Indian Pass. What's this all about? I'll tell you later. Yeah. We can't make it, Mr. Cartwright. You've got to come to him. I can't do that, Jack. Uh, I just received an important message. I've got to leave town for a couple of days. You can't leave, Mr. Cartwright. This means a man's life. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Not I... just Lay's, but mine. The vigilantes are all over the country. I need your protection. But uh... I've got a horse already for you. Please. Raft out the men. We're heading for Indian Pass. What's the matter? Seems to me this is a roundabout way. Well, I can't take any chances. Well, wait a minute. This is the trail to Indian Pass. Yeah, sledge down there. You mean that's where we're going? Yes. Anything wrong? No, no, just, just a little stitch in the side. Maybe we better go slower. All right. Here they come. Get set. But don't do any fire until I get the signal. You know, I've been thinking over what you told me about the way my father was killed. But... What did you say? I say there's something funny about the way Bart Reynolds and my father were killed. Almost like they were ambushed. No, no, I... It couldn't be. Mr. Cartwright, how did you know my father was shot in the head? He was shot in the head? I don't know what they're talking about. But you knew he was shot in the head. If you didn't do it, who did? I'm not going any further. Oh, yes, you are. Then it is an ambush. Cartwright, you killed my father, and then tried to get Slade, and now me. Cartwright, you're riding on until you remember who fired that shot. <laughs> Cartwright. The vigilantes are coming. Cartwright's double crossed us. Mason! Mason! Don't shoot! It's me! Skyline!
along, get going. Put him on our horse. Nice work, Jack. Looks like we mounted them all up. Yes, thanks to you. All right, boys, mount them up. Let's get out of here. I want to thank you again. You not only saved my money, but you've saved my ranch. Looks like it might work into a permanent job. <laughs> Is that a proposal? Well, it wasn't fuzzy, but it's not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs>